Hello, I, my name is Yaman, and I will try to uh, help you solve the homework question for Supply Chain 335, homework three, and we will just get started. So there's a company that manufactures purses, bags, and luggage. The construction of the three products requires leather as the primary raw material. The production process uses two types of skilled labor, sewing and finishing. The following table will give us the available resources to do so. And I'm just gonna start labeling what each one means. So what we would do, I'm just gonna draw down the table. So we have P for purses, and then we have B for bags, and then we have L for luggage. And then here we have the availability, I'm just gonna available and we're given the resources right here so we're given leather and square feet and then we're also giving sewing and hours and then we're given how long it takes to finish product and also in hours and I'm just gonna start labeling those so first of all we have and also given the, the price of each product in dollars and I'm just gonna start with um, purses we're given two square feet of uh, leather and then we're given one square foot of leather for bags and then also given four square feet of luggage and then for sewing it takes two hours to sew purses and then we're given also one hour to sew bags and then three hours to sew L uh, luggage and then here I'm just gonna cut this off uh, we're given three hours to finish the purses and then we're given half an hour to finish uh, bags and then we're given also two hours to finish luggage and we're also given the price here so it would cost after plugging all these in it would cost us $34 for purses and then $15 for bags and then 55 55 uh, dollars for luggage and we're going to put the availability here so uh, greater than uh, less than or equal to 62 uh, feet of leather is available and then we also have less than or equal to um, we're given 80 hours to do the sewing that's available for us and then to finish it we have 75 hours to finish and as you can see here we will have our constraints and our objective function and I will now show how we will do this in Excel and solve part one part a of the problem the table given to us of each uh, raw material material given from the leather and also the hours for sewing and finishing and the price of each unit and the uh, hour availability for sewing and finishing and how many feet is available for the raw material and I will show you how to do this in Excel so if we go here to Excel see I've already done it but we'll start from the beginning so we will call this purses and I will zoom in just to show a bit more and this is bags and leather uh, luggage And here we leave this empty 
and he will have the objective function which we are given which is the price right here and I will label that as 34 15 and 55 and then I will put in the first constraint which is for leather so I'm going to put L for leather and I'm going to type it out and then constraint and then for the sewing, it will be constraint two. And then for finishing, which will be constraint three. And now, oh, I'm trying to just make this look a bit more professional. Here we go. And then we're given the constraint for leather, which is two for purses that's how many feet it takes to make a purse and then for luggage it takes one square foot of leather to make it and then for luggage it is four feet squared of leather to make luggage and then for sewing it takes two hours to sew it one hour for bags and then for luggage it takes three hours to make and then for to finish it, it takes three hours to finish, and then half an hour for bags to finish, and then two hours for luggage. And then here we will just put our um, limits on it and the available the available time and raw material material to make each one of those. So less less than or equal to less than or equal to and then we're given 62 right here 62 feet of leather available and then 80 hours to sew and then we're given 75 hours to finish available to finish and here is we will start our first uh, way to, to solve this so we'll use the sum product function and do that for the objective and then comma and then we'll do function f for our optimal solution and we'll just drag this down all the way and then here what we will do is go into solver then solver will take us here and then we're given the changing variables cells so which is right here and then for the reference and the range um, these are the constraints we have okay and remember to put simple simplex LP in your programming and then we'll be given the uh, optimal solution and also what we will do here to further explain the questions is we will do a sensi sensitivity report. And this is what we'll do. I already have it here. But this is the sensitivity report and I will explain what that means. So for part A of the homework, uh, the question goes, Determine the new optimal objective function value when the following changes happen. All questions are independent. Meaning, this question A1 has no relation to A2. So if we change seven, so the square feet of leather from 62 to 70, and then we get a new optimal solution. When we go to A2, it has no relation to the question previous. So that means instead of going from 70 to 69 square feet of leather. We go back to the original of 62 available feet of leather, meaning it would drop down to 61. And I'll explain how to answer each one of those. First question asks us if we increase the leather to 70. And here I've already done it, but the original goes we had an optimal solution from 1018 at 62 feet squared of leather that's available to us 
and then we increased it to seven to 70 feet squared and what this does it in changed our optimal solution to 1130 and the reason it changed to 1130 is because we are given um, a couple things here so one of the biggest one is the shadow price so it went up by a hundred and twelve dollars meaning our shadow price when it increase uh, the shadow price is how much our objective function would increase or decrease by each unit of resources added meaning for each one of the letter we added so we went from 62 to 70 um, to 70 we got 8 meaning the 8 we got multiplied by 14 which is our shadow price we got 112 and 112 plus our original plus our original our original optimal solution we are given 130 uh, 1130 meaning for each time we had an increase of one resource uh, within the allowable increase of uh, leather we we got 14 uh, dollars more for each square foot of leather we got extra on top of the 62 and we had eight so 14 times eight is 112 and then we added that to the original price um, which was 1018 plus the 112 which equals 1130 and this is within our allowable inc uh, increase of uh, resources. So we went up by eight and that's within our allowable increase. So we have 10 more feet where we would make profit, but if it went over 18, it would be irrelevant because that's would be just pointless to add any more because uh, we, we won't be making any more money and our resources will be mostly allocated to the leather. And now, if we go back to question A2, available leather is decreased by one foot, meaning if we go from 70 and we were 62 originally, and now we go to 61, what this will do, and we can do this in solver too, is show what the optimal solution is now and our optimal solution went down um, from 1018 to 1004 and that is because uh, we're, we dropped $14 uh, according to the shadow price here so we went from 118 to 1004 subtracted the shadow price of 14 that gives 1004 and that's how we got that and then if we move on to question a3 the available selling hours are changed to 86 hours let's see what that does so we'll go back to the original should have no effect so if we go up to 86 something interesting will happen and we just solve for the optimal solution and now we see that it has not changed why is that because if we look here the shadow price for selling is zero it means adding more selling time will not result in any change to the total profits meaning it will remain at 1018. So even if we added any more hours, it would not make change. And why is that? Why is it if we added six hours to the 80, it would not make any change? 
and that's because allowable, the allowable increase is infinite, meaning if you go anything above the 80 here, the, the constraint RH side, anything above that would not result in change in profits, meaning it will remain at 1018. And then we will go to question A4, available selling hours are changed to 60. So the same spot, if we change this to 60, we'll see what happens. Again, it does not matter, I just like getting rid of these. What will happen if we decrease the sewing time? And we see the optimal solution did change. So it went from 1018 to 1008. And why is that? We only, uh, we dropped 20. So why did that change now? So if we go back here, we are given the allowable decrease of um, re of resources here, speaking hours. So if we decrease the available hours from um, below 18, and we decrease that by two, so 18 plus two, 20, we went from 80 to 60, meaning that it went beyond the allowable decrease, and this will result in a decrease in profits. And yeah, it resulted in us dropping to um, 1,008. And then to A5, and the available letters changed to 65 feet squared, and the available finishing hours are changed to 70 hours. So if now we go back to the original, we change these two variables, so 62 to 67, we increase have an increase of 5, uh, square feet per letter and then we decrease the hours the available hours hours for finishing um, and then we decrease by five and we will see what will happen in solver when we do this will uh, optimal solution be now and as you can see the optimal solution changed to 1078 and how did that happen so we went up by five five square feet for leather and as we said before the shadow price is how much our objective function is increases or decreases if we add or remove resources so for each square foot of leather we increase the profit by fourteen dollars and fourteen times five we get seventy but also we decrease our hours of finishing the, uh, by five. So the total available hours to finish is decreased from 75 to 70. And that's decrease and five. So that would be as such. And what do we multiply it with? So we will multiply it by two because if we go back here, we see the shadow price for finishing is $2. meaning we will get negative 10. And now we will see why we got this as the final, as the optimal solution. So if we get this original number, we add this and this, we get, what happened? So we, get, we had 118 plus, 70 minus 10 and then we get 1078 as the final solution and a6 would you recommend hiring an additional part-time finishing worker at $15 an hour for two hours a day so let's see why that could be good or bad for us so right here we have our optimal solution of 1018 and then we hired somebody for $15 an hour and that'll be negative because we're paying them that amount so part time so how would how would this make sense so 
first of all, we have our optimal solution. Let's see if this would make any sense to us. So for us, we will, our shadow price, we can always go back to our shadow price. So our shadow price for finishing is $2. So for each additional hour worked, it's worth $2 for us. So we have somebody's uh, hours that they work, which is 15 here. We times that by two by our shadow price, and then we would get this as our new optimal solution. And that is not optimal because we dropped 30, because again, it would not be recommended because we were paying somebody more money for two hours of work at $15, while our shadow price is two, meaning for each additional two hours somebody worked, for each hour somebody worked, extra hour of finishing time, it's only worth $2 to us because that's how much we make on each hour. So if we pay somebody more, we would be losing money and that would not be good for our profits because we would drop by 30 uh, because 15 times 2 is 30 and we're talking negative so it drops by 30 and that and that would not be recommended since it would not be in our interest to lose on profit for two hours of work that's each worth $15 an hour